Hello and welcome to Andy's Little Sci-Fi Horror Show. My name is Andy. This is my little 10 minute window to the rest of the world and today is Friday something April. It's the end of April vacation Friday. I'm outside right now getting some fresh air. Um, Drew's going to be coming over in a little bit. I'm getting some fresh air because I spent about 50 hours in the past five days editing the movie I've been working on. And I just, I need to get out. So I'm getting some fresh air right now before Drew gets here. I'm enjoying the quiet. Hey, Mr. Smith. Want to try out my time machine? It runs on Doritos. Sure. So now what? Gotta put the whole bag in. Okay. Yes! It's really working, Jimmy! This is the greatest ball in the world! Get out of my yard! Jimmy? You're so old. It's the future! I'm relaxing for one of the first times on my vacation. It's been a very productive uh, vacation. First couple of days was a lot of household work. Ken and I installed the new ceiling in the bathroom, which looks great. And uh, I, I could do something else the day before, but I can't remember. It's like so long ago. Yes, but this is me still in a holding pattern, waiting for Drew, contemplating the doorways to the fourth dimension. Like it's still really small and tiny and they're all around us. I am fascinated with the idea of the fourth dimension. Well, in a 1D world, nothing is a singular point. Three-dimensional objects in the 2D world appear to be flat lines, and 3D objects in a 3D world appear 3D. There's an interesting theory that I like, that everything in our reality, in three-dimensional reality that we know, is just the shadows of items from the fourth dimension. That's how screwed up that dimension is. We can't even begin to contemplate it. Klein bottles have one side, actually, not just that metaphoric design they have where it's uh, welded through itself. Maybe I'm just hungry. I'm still in a holding pattern waiting for Drew. And I'm still contemplating the fourth dimension. It's like the fish in the waiting pool. The fish swimming around with the other fish friends. They have their own little existence underneath the water. Little did they know that everything above the surface is around them and they don't even know it's there. But if you reach down and, if I paraphrasing a well-known scientist, if you take the fish, pull them out of the water, show them around, get him to consciously realize what he's seeing, and brought him back into the water, he would sound like a crazy fish telling people, other people he saw outside the realm of that plane that exists over them. So that's one way to look at the fourth dimension. I'm being photobombed by a bird. That's when I see you. Go tell all your friends. Send them a tweet. See? This is a perfect example. This bird right now, you see him crystal clear. Because I had the camera pushed in and focused. And he's showing us his bird butt. But that's not the point. My point is, his existence is outside the screen door. He has no idea I'm here. And here is Drew. So I'm going to go get some food. The man, the myth, the legend is here. Bring it in, bitch. What's yeah. going on, bro? All right. I'll be back. The okay. Clock just stops at Thursday. Oh, yeah. Stuck on Thursday. I can deal with that. Thursdays are nice days. Thursdays are happy days. I didn't go out for almost two days straight. But here I am. Right now, we're going to get something to eat. This is guy time here. In the 1980s, A&W launched an advertising campaign to promote a new third pound burger. It was bigger and beefier than the competition's puny quarter pound option. And the price was the same. So how come nobody bought it? Turns out, Americans are just terrible at math. Like, really bad. Everybody thought that one third was smaller than one quarter because, you know, four is bigger than three. The whole thing went down in history as a huge marketing fail. And we've spent the last 40 years crunching the numbers. Our best mathematicians working day in and day out, trying to crack the uncrackable code, solving the unsolvable equation to claw our way back from this embarrassing episode. And we've done it. Introducing the A&W Three Nights Burger. It's bigger. Genius. 
What was I saying? Oh, oh yes. Well, I've been contemplating the fourth dimension a lot lately. So, really? but first of all, let's get something to eat. Hold on a second. I gotta see how much money I have. I don't even know if I. I don't even know how much money my wife took out of my wallet. One second. Let's find out how much the wife took. Well, on camera. Okay, we can eat. Okay. Any so, particular? Uh, I don't know. I mean, we're not hitting the Ritz Carlton, I don't think, tonight, no. No, not with, not with what's left in my wallet. Lisa and Liz, they went out to dinner. And they didn't tell me where they were going. How they, funny would it be if we run into them? If we go to the 99, we won't run into them, though, because, I don't know, what are you thinking? You're driving. I'm, I'm up for anything at this point, honestly. I, the fact that I'm outside breathing fresh oxygen in this high-resolution world, yep. I'm feeling better about that. Anyways, cut that part out. Ignore all those thoughts in my head I just had. Good job. This is the random world of Andy Sawyer. Oh, it is right now, man. I'm telling you. At least it's in a good place. So we could go to Grumpy's? We did Grumpy's last we, time, didn't we? Uh, yeah, we did. Uh, we did. We, we, yes, we, we did. Yes, we did. We did do Grumpy's we last time. We did do Grumpy's last all right. time. Um, well, well, this is the crossroads, you know, where we got to like make a deal with the devil. We're going to go this way in town to get something to eat locally. Or we're going to go out to the mall out city next door area. Your choice. You're driving. This is your car. Oh. You know what? Let's get 99s. Yeah. So how have you been? Anything interesting going on? Uh, well... <laughs> You're welcome for the fast-forward version of that. <laughs> now, I have um, two more days of my vacation. I have to make them count. I have to do something stupid. But that's tomorrow. Right now, I'm in my zone here, in a high-resolution world, contemplating the fourth dimension. <gasps> Wow, I never really thought about that. If the people in the video editing TV show thing were real life, we would be in the fourth dimension. Yeah, that's true. Oh my God. Is the people in the fourth dimension and editing us? Did they just make me say that? The world may never know. Oh, I know. I know. I know. Someone's been eating my hamburger. Someone's been eating my hot dog. Someone's been eating my Presenting A&W's Puppet Platter. For a special low price, get your kids an A&W hamburger or hot dog, golden fries, and a frosty drink, all in a special package. That turns into one of us! Hey, get your paws off my drink! Bring in your family and start collecting all four puppets at your participating A&W. What do I? I know. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm, I'm stressed here. I'm in a vehicle, which I'm not controlling. Okay, if you could change something about this world, we did powers of asking people in the fourth dimension who are editing this episode right now. In reality, I'm editing this episode. They're editing this episode. That's wicked, wicked meta. Anyways, if you could ask people in the fourth dimension to change something in your world right now, and it would be a permanent change, past and future. Like, if you wanted to be the king of Siam, you would never remember you were you. Okay. So it's got to be like all, all in. This isn't no Keanu Reeves, Metro Neo. You can like get a clue by hiding, you know, because creeping out of the, the battery operated shell and sliming the goop. I would think you... I would be remiss if I didn't say that I would be the person who actually created Playboy magazine. All of the good and bad? All the good and bad, yeah, sure. Okay, you know what? I'm seriously saying, I, I, this is kind of uncut and it will be cut, but like, he kind of had that answer right there, Rich. Right? So I'm curious, why would, was, is this I don't a, know, it's just like a man thing, you know? Why wouldn't a guy want to have the opportunity to have such a super duper impact upon society? You look at Playboy and the kind of the impact that it had on society and like the life that Hugh Hefner had, mm -hmm. who wouldn't want that? And secondly, it's like a no duh kind of thing that the whole society would need something like Playboy in the world to actually exist. Well, I guess.